In the following AWS Proto demonstration, we will submit a production scene from 3ds Max to Deadline. The scene was supplied by FuseFX and is from their work on the Amazon Prime video series, The Tick. The total asset size, including the scene file and the textures and the point caches, is over 8 gigabytes. And I'm using a home internet connection with around 15 megabits per second upstream. I have already installed Deadline 10 with its AWS portal. You can take a look at the YouTube video posted on the Thinkbox software website for the exact steps. I have also installed the 3ds Max Integrated Submitter, also known as SMTD, as per the instructions found in the Deadline Online documentation in the Application Plugin section, 3ds Max application. Here is the production scene loaded in 3ds Max 2018. It contains 75 frames of character animation. The meshes were cached using point cache. And we can open the render scene dialog to take a look at the current renderer. It is set to V-Ray and will render all 75 frames. We can create a new beauty output in a subfolder V005 under the render output which is also routed to one of the asset paths handled by deadline asset synchronization. We check all the render settings, everything looks good. And uh, at this point we can close the render setup dialog and launch the integrated deadline submitter. Here the job name is already set to the scene name. We can set the pool to 3D and the group to 3ds Max. Then in the Assets tab, we'll have to switch the saving mode for the scene content from submitting with the scene to using a custom network path. And we'll set a network path that is also routed at one of the asset synchronization paths. On the list of assets that were enumerated by scanning all the objects and the uh, asset tracker of 3ds Max. Uh, we see all the textures, some of them are UDIM and we also have some point cache files that were also collected. All these files, approximately 7.5 gigabytes, are going to be synchronized to AWS during the submission. If we don't check the option to synchronize to AWS, then uh, the uh, slaves will request those files themselves. In the Limits tab, we can enable the options to automatically provide limits for Max and V-Ray. We can also manually check them on the list, but with the automated options, it will adapt to the current renderer. So if we enable other renderer and have the automated options, then it will correctly handle them. The reason we have to enable these limits is that we want to provide usage-based licensing to both 3ds Max and V-Ray. Please refer to the AWS portal setup video in the Thinkbox Software's YouTube channel that was mentioned earlier for more details on setting up usage-based licensing and limits. We are now submitting the scene to deadline, which involves saving a copy of the current scene content to a max file. The max file will be located in the folder we specified in the asset tab as a custom network path, uh, which is part of the asset folders uh, that have been handled by the deadline asset synchronization. This makes this scene file another asset that has to be synchronized to the cloud before all the uh, AWS render nodes can access it. Otherwise, if we would submit the scene with the job, all the machines would try to read it from the deadline repository and this would congest the internet connection. This file saves a long time because uh, normally it would be 1.8 gigabytes in size uncompressed and would synchronize in about 20 minutes with the current connection. So I have specifically enabled in uh, the 3ds Max customized preferences files 
compress on save and the file will be only 680 megabytes in size and will synchronize to the cloud in only about six minutes with the current connection. Now the saving has finished and the job is submitted to deadline so we can uh, move on to the deadline monitor and uh, start a spot fleet. To do this we need to create an AWS portal infrastructure which provides secure connection to AWS. It enables communication, license forwarding and asset synchronization to the deadline render nodes. To create an infrastructure click on the plus icon while in super user mode select uh, region and uh, optional availability zone and click the launch button. In a few minutes the infrastructure will be created on AWS. Since AWS Portal requires super user mode access, it's a good idea to protect it with a password. We already have an infrastructure running, but if we right-click it, we cannot see the advanced features because we are logged in as a regular user. We need to go to the Tools menu and enable the super user mode. Once we do this, an additional plus icon appears which lets us create new infrastructures and right click in the infrastructure itself lets us start spot fleets. We can uh, go to the user security tab in the configure repository options and enter password to protect the super user mode since uh, only super users should be allowed to spend money in the cloud by launching infrastructures and spot fleets. Now if we get out of super user mode and back in we will be prompted to enter the password. We have the infrastructure running because uh, I needed to pre-cache all the assets which normally take about uh, an hour to upload using the 15 megabit per second connection. However, a company running a significantly faster internet connection would be able to do this in minutes or just a few seconds. Next we'll create a spot fleet request so with an Amazon machine image and a diversified uh, list of instance types and we'll define slave behavior pools and groups. We can uh, open the, from the right click menu the spot fleet request dialog. It takes a few seconds since uh, the dialog is pulling some data from AWS about the current prices and available instances. We'll be using the 3ds Max 2018 with V-Ray predefined Amazon machine image shipping with deadline and in the instances instance types tab we can first use the preset for 60 gigabyte machines and then we can remove some of the types and add more for example the C5 and M5 larger instance types using the latest Skylake architecture and uh, we can modify the list. The more machine types we have, the larger the chance to get uh, spot instances at the best price. We recommend the C, M and R compute instance types for CPU rendering and G for GPU rendering. The number after the letter denotes the generation, as mentioned already, the fifth generation uh, is using the Skylake technology. Previous ones are Broadwell, Haswell, um, Ivy Bridge and so on. The t-shirt size part of the name describes the CPU count with xlarge having four CPUs, uh, two xlarge 8, four xlarge 16 and so on. To learn more about the EC2 instance types you can click on the link in the Spotfleet dialog. We can take a look at the most expensive types and enter the maximum price to be above that and we'll launch 10 instances at the beginning. We can keep those instances running until manually shut down or we can automatically shut them down if they have nothing to do for more than a minute or any number of minutes to define. For now we'll keep it with maintain and we'll define the group to be 3ds max and the pools to contain the 3d pool since we submitted our job to uh, be part of the 3D pool and to use the 3ds Max group. In the 
AWS settings, so we'll be using all three uh, availability zones. And then we can launch the spot fleet request. It will take a few minutes for all the machines to come up. So we're going to fast forward through this section and take a look at the results. We start seeing some of the random nodes appearing on the list. The deadline slave application is launching and picking up tasks from our job. We can expand the spot fleet request and take a look at the machines and the machine types specifically that were launched. We see that uh, a few of each requested instance type were launched and so far we have 9 out of 10 fulfilled. It's still pending fulfillment. So we'll fast forward a little bit more until all 10 instances have been created. At this point, the spot fleet request has been fulfilled. We have 10 out of 10 launched. And eventually, all of them will be rendering the job. We see that we have 10 instances in all the panels. The initial startup time of the render nodes is relatively long, over 7 minutes because each one has to load over 8 gigabytes of assets. While we're waiting, we can take a look at the new feature of that line, the Job Render Candidates dialog. In the past, we had uh, Job Candidates filter that showed us which render nodes qualified. Now we can see what the reason is for passing or not passing the filter. We can right-click a job and select Find Render Candidates. This will open the Job Render Candidates dialog and we get a list of the nodes that are able to render and the uh, ones that are unable with the reason why. In this case, uh, we are missing a pool and a group. We can also see what pool and what group and what limits this particular job is requiring. Let's take a look at the limits and the usage base licensing. 3ds Max uses UBL when running uh, on AWS and V-Ray uh, can be used with an existing floating license, bring your own license mode or per core UBL and we use the limits to define these so we can uh, take a look at the limits panel. We have a max limit which uh, uh, is being used by 10 machines. We can open it and take a look. Uh, currently it's set to unlimited UBL any machine that is added to the slaves list appears on the master slave list. Any machine added manually to the blacklisted slaves won't try to pick up this job. And any machines that might have a node locked license could be added to the slave excluded from the list uh, column. So they wouldn't uh, uh, try to get a limit and still run. The same we have here for V-Ray, except that it's uh, license per core. We can switch back to the AWS portal panel and uh, eventually we're going to uh, take a look at the render status. The render status display shows us the current status of the renderer as reported in the log. And it's very useful to keep track of multiple render nodes when they are working on the same job. Here we can see that uh, some of the machines are starting to actually render and V-Ray is outputting information about its current uh, progress. For example, updating objects and preparing lights and then rendering. And we can see some uh, ETAs 
and percentage information that the render is outputting, and we can see them at a glance. If we skip ahead, we can see that all the render nodes are already rendering and uh, some are finishing with the rendering. We can go and take a look at the progress bars, and we see that uh, indeed a few of the render nodes have finished. So we can take a look at the output asset synchronization. Whenever a task finishes, its render output is automatically synchronized back to the folder that was specified in the render dialog. So we can right click one of the finished instances, or any of the tasks really in this case, and explore the folder. And we see that for the frames 4, 5 and 8, we already have the files here. And whenever another frame finishes, for example, it's about to finish the number 3, there we have the frame 3 automatically synchronized back into the folder. We can fast forward over this in order to see more of the frames uh, progressing and uh, finishing rendering. And our folder will be populated with more and more outputs uh, as the render nodes uh, complete the tasks and move on to the next task. After a while, we see that uh, one of the render nodes was actually hanging and uh, was marked as stalled. In the Slaves panel at the bottom, we get a red indicator for that. And it's very useful to actually keep uh, these panels in an overview mode, so if you're far away in the other corner of the room, you can immediately see if there is a problem if a machine is misbehaving or a task is failing and so on, you are immediately going to notice the red indicator there. Let's take a look at the uh, fleet target capacity. We can change this to add more machines to render. We cannot change any of the other parameters of the spot fleet request, but we can uh, eventually launch a new spot fleet request if we want different types of instances or with different uh, maximum price. And if we want to shut down machines, we can then just shut down some of those uh, spot fleet requests and the corresponding machines will go down. Now let's open the adjust target capacity dialog. Here we can enter, for example, 20 machines instead of 10, and we can take a look actually at the auto adjust option. It is currently enabled, and whenever we change the number of machines, some of the parameters related to uh, update frequency and so on will be adjusted in order to accommodate the larger number of instances connecting uh, to the repository. Now we'll see that our spot fleet request will change from green to orange. It is modifying its, its state at the moment and the capacity will be changing from 10 to 20. We'll fast forward again in order to see the results. Eventually 10 additional instances will be launched and uh, the deadline slaves will be connected to the repository, and our slaves list will reflect that. Here we go, more and more instances uh, launching the deadline slave, and initially they are offline, then they are idle, and then they pick up tasks to render and turn green. We can switch the slave panel to list view mode and uh, delete the one idle slave. 
in order to remove the red indicator from the display. Then we can switch back to the graph pie chart view. Eventually all the tasks of this job will com be completed and then the whole job will be completed so at that point we can shut down the fleet manually or if it wasn't launched in maintain mode then the slaves would detect that they have been idle for a while and shut down themselves automatically. Uh, for manual shutdown we just right click the spot fleet request and select stop spot fleet Again, we can automatically adjust some of the parameters related to updating, depending on the number of uh, slaves on the list. And uh, after that, we'll have to wait for the whole spot fleet to terminate. We are now in cancelled terminating mode, and then we see that some of the instances are shutting down and the slaves are also disconnecting. After a while, all 20 instances will be terminated, and at that point, the whole spot fleet request will disappear from the spot fleets panel. This takes a few minutes, so we are going to skip ahead in order not to waste time. At this point the job is completed and the spot fleet uh, has been shut down. We can go and use any image sequence viewer, uh, flipbook application or the RAM player of 3ds Max to actually take a look at the sequence that we rendered. In the RAM player we'll select the version 005 folder, select one of the rendered images and then load uh, sequence of 75 frames. Here we can see the thick dismantling uh, portion of a spaceship. Of course the playback running at 30 FPS is not being captured by the screen capturing software. Uh, it's uh, perfect frame rate, but we can review the individual frames here and we uh, have our images rendered on AWS using Deadline and AWS Portal.